Hong Kong stocks plunge more than 9%. Former fitness trainers of physical go to work for the first day with their new employer, Fit. And the Israel military piles more pressure on Hezbollah in Lebanon. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Following a week-long break, Shanghai and Shenzhen stock markets resumed trading, having rallied as much as 10 percent during the day. That's despite the fact that the National Development and Reform Commission did not launch new stimulus measures as expected. Hong Kong stocks meanwhile cascaded more than 2,100 points, wiping out the gains over the past week. Turnovers reach a record high today. Hong Kong stock market tumbled right at the open, with Hang Seng Index reaching the lowest of the day in the morning at 20,762 points. The benchmark index closed the trading day at 20,926 points, after falling 2,172 points, a record decline in points. But there's also another record, a historic high in turnover, with $620 billion worth of shares having changed hands. The Hansen index surged about 2,000 points over the Minglas National Day holidays, all wiped out in one day. This man noted the topsy-turvy market sentiment is hard to predict, but he said he made a lucky exit the day before. A strategist from Food to Security said the market frenzy is not a healthy trend, with the National Development and Reform Commission not launching new stimulus measures as expected. The slump helps provide some market adjustment to the bull run, he said. China Galaxy declined more than 30 percent. Citic Securities, Huatai Securities and China Life also plunged more than 20 percent, selling pressure for mainland's real estate stocks too, with some plummeting 30 to 40 percent. Internet stocks also dragged down the market, with Meituan and JD.com falling more than 10 percent. Tencent fell 8 percent. Mainland stock markets climbed to their highest levels in more than two years at the open today, after the National Day Golden Week holiday before the gains narrowed. But the market still saw record turnovers. The Shanghai Composite Index closed 4.6 percent higher, while the Shenzhen market went up 8.9 percent. The Shanghai and Shenzhen markets saw record turnovers at 3.45 trillion yuan. Stocks of security and semiconductor companies rose sharply, but tourism and hotel shares fell. Some 60 fitness trainers of the shuttered gym chain Physical were employed by the latest company to have taken over Physical's Wan Chai branch. They started working with their new employer today. Timothy Lee reports. A number of trainers headed to their first day of work at the Perfect Fitness Center located at the former Wan Chai branch of Physical. Some former Physical employees said they have confidence in the new company. <laughs> This trainer was satisfied with the contract, saying that she signed it yesterday after being notified of the Perfit brand at the end of last month. Perfit, a subsidiary of beauty company Perface, said it had already hired more than 200 former physical staff members, including some 60 trainers. The company said its goal is to rehire all former physical employees. This trainer said his confidence in Perface increased after finding out it is a public company. Physical's former Mongkok branch will also reopen next week under the brand name Perfit. Former customers of the now defunct Physical gym chain will have access to both gyms. Former clients of Physical's beauty treatments can also use the remaining services at Perfit centers. But what do Physical customers think of the latest measures? This woman said Perfit never asked her to sign a contract and only told her to enjoy herself the last few times she visited. While this man said he will have more faith in the company when more branches are open. This, as Perfit said, it is drafting a consent form for the transfer of personal data as demanded by the Office of the Privacy Commissioner for Personal Data. The company will arrange for former physical customers to sign the document this week. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Healthcare train CR. Chain CR Care announced all of its Hong Kong branches will close down on November 8th. Some lawmakers in the retail sector believe the company made the decision because of the growing trend of locals choosing to spend money on the mainland. 
Notifications of the upcoming closure were put up at CR Cares branches, citing external challenges and uncertainties as factors for the decision. The healthcare chain was established in 1999. It primarily sells both Chinese and Western medicine as well as healthcare products. The company reminded customers who have gift tokens must use them by the 7th of next month. The Israeli military says it has killed a senior Hezbollah commander in a strike on Beirut a day after the one-year anniversary of the October 7th attacks by Hamas and other Palestinian groups. Suhail Hosseini was responsible for overseeing logistics, budget and management of the Lebanese group. This as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to continue his country's fight on all fronts. Nasbi Karim has more. Gaza. Lebanon, Yemen, Iran. At least four theaters in what Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu describes as a seven-front war for his country. In a Monday ceremony in Jerusalem to mark the one-year anniversary of the October 7, 2023 attacks, Netanyahu made it clear peace was not on the cards. In every encounter my wife and I have with our fighters, with our wounded, with the bereaved families, we hear the same message over and over again. We must not stop the war prematurely, Netanyahu said. Israel's military, the IDF, says it has already rendered obsolete Gaza group Hamas as a fighting force. But in an interview, one of the Hamas leaders, Khalid Mashal, said they would rise again. And as a reminder, they sent rockets from Gaza into Tel Aviv on Monday, setting off sirens and forcing those attending anniversary events to lie flat on the ground as projectiles flew overhead. In Lebanon, Israel rained more bombs on the capital, Beirut, and other areas in the south and eastern Bakar Valley. Reports say the IDF has expanded its ground incursion into southern Lebanon, despite calling it a limited operation. We have seen the ground operations so far continue to be limited. We've seen limited incursions on the ground. That is not to offer any kind of forecast about what's going to happen. It's just an offer, uh, an assessment of what we see on the ground right now. The U.S. says it remains to be seen how Israel will respond to Iran's missile barrage against the Jewish state last week. <laughs> Iran has warned that any attack would result in an even greater response aimed at Israel's infrastructure. At an annual conference in Tehran dedicated to Palestinian solidarity, Iranian parliament speaker Mohammad Bagher Khalibaf said Israel's military has so far failed in their stated goals. In the West Bank, Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammad Mustafa met French Foreign Minister Yon Noel Barrow in Ramallah. Barrow said France favors a ceasefire in Gaza and Lebanon and is willing to work with parties for de-escalation. Nearby, the funeral was held for a 12-year-old boy who was shot and killed by Israeli forces for throwing stones at them. Nazvi Karim, TVB News. In the U.S., Floridans are bracing for the approach of Hurricane Milton. Although the Category 5 hurricane was downgraded to a Category 4 storm early today, forecasters say it still poses an extremely serious threat. Milton now with maximum sustained winds of 250 kilometers per hour could make landfall on Wednesday in a Tampa Bay area on the west coast of Florida. Tracy Furness has more. Less than two weeks after catastrophic Hurricane Helen swamped the Florida coastline, Milton is threatening a dangerous storm surge of up to 3.6 meters in Tampa Bay. Residents across the west coast of Florida are preparing for the impact. We got hit with the last storm. Um, we got flooded, so it's all about prepping this time. So we're getting the sandbags ready to put around the house to prevent what happened last week. Just wanting to make sure that we're protected from the storm surge. The last one came up uh, real close to the front door, so um, I think we needed some bags to make sure we're protected this time. Officials say it is imperative for mounds of debris left behind by Helen to be cleared ahead of Milton's arrival so the pieces cannot become projectiles. Almost the entire west coast of Florida was under a hurricane warning early Tuesday as Milton crept towards the state, sucking energy from the Gulf of Mexico's warm water. Meanwhile, the White House slammed the misinformation campaigns that followed Hurricane Helen. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump and others allegedly spread false claims, suggesting officials withheld assistance from Republican storm victims. Unfortunately, scam artists and bad faith actors and others who are putting politics over people 
are promoting misinformation about our efforts, including falsehoods about federal assistance. This is wrong, dangerous, and must stop immediately. Elected officials at every level and on both sides of the aisle have also called for an end to these conspiracy theories. False information following a disaster can discourage people from seeking critical assistance when they need it the most. In Mexico, officials organized buses to evacuate people from the low-lying Gulf coastal city of Progreso in the Yucatan Peninsula after the country's National Meteorological Service said Milton may hit late Monday or early Tuesday. Milton Center could hit Florida's Tampa Bay region Wednesday, which has not endured a direct hit by a major hurricane in more than a century. Tracy Furness, TVB News. And still ahead. ASEAN foreign ministers meet in Laos ahead of a leader summit. An American and a Britain win the Nobel Prize in Physics. And Hong Kong's 10 most outstanding young persons this year. Welcome back. Top diplomats of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations are meeting in the Lao capital, Vientiane. Issues such as disputes in the South China Sea are expected to be discussed. Danny Zhou has a story. The three-day ASEAN meeting kicked off today at the National Convention Center in Vientiane, the capital of Laos, the only landlocked nation in Southeast Asia. Despite differing opinions over regional issues, foreign ministers and representatives of the bloc's 10 member states gathered to build more engagement under this year's theme of enhancing connectivity and resilience. Vivian Balakrishnan of Singapore, Mohammed Hassan of Malaysia and Buitan Son of Vietnam attended the curtain-raising foreign minister's meeting, moderated by Laos Foreign Minister Salim Sai Komasu. ASEAN Secretary-General Kao Kim Horn was present. Timor Leste joined the meeting as an observer as matters were discussed on the country preparing for its full membership. In his address, Laos Foreign Minister Salam Sai Komasu took stock of ASEAN's community-building efforts while urging fellow members to handle brewing geopolitical tensions with concerted efforts. The region and the world continue to face with rapidly changing and complex geopolitical and geoeconomic landscape that presents both opportunity and challenges. ASEAN concerted effort is needed to respond proactively and effectively to these challenges with a view to maintaining and promoting regional and global peace. Officials from other countries such as China, Japan and South Korea will attend meetings in the coming days. South China Sea disputes are expected to be on the agenda. It is reported that Premier Li Chiang is set to attend the leader summit on East Asia cooperation and pay state visits to Laos and Vietnam afterwards. Danny Zhou, TVB News. The Pacific Island nation of Kiribati has issued rare criticism of China over last month's launch of an intercontinental ballistic missile. China conducted a rare launch of an ICBM with a dummy warhead on September 25th that landed in the Pacific Ocean. Beijing said it was for weapons testing and training. And nations including Fiji, Australia and New Zealand have said this was concerning. The Kiribati president's office said it had not received notice from China about the missile launch. The office said it was told by the Chinese embassy there was no need to alert Kiribati because the test was not meant to target any country in the Pacific. However, Kiribati said it does not welcome China's recent ICBM test. Wu Bangguo, former chairman of the National People's Congress Standing Committee, has died following an illness at the age of 84. In an obituary issued by the central government, who was described as an outstanding Chinese Communist Party member and an excellent leader. Wu was educated at Tsinghua University and worked in Shanghai for many years, where he served as the party secretary of the city. He left his post as vice premier in 1995 and served as chairman of the MPC Standing Committee between 2002 and 2013. American John Hopfield and British-Canadian Jeffrey Hinton were today awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. 
The pair was hailed for discoveries and inventions that formed the building blocks of machine learning. Hotfield's research is carried out at Princeton University and Hinton works at the University of Toronto. The Nobel Committee said the two winners have used tools from physics to develop methods that are the foundation of today's powerful machine learning. The award comes with a prize sum of 11 million Swedish kroner, or 1 million U.S. dollars, which is shared between the winners if more than one. On Monday, two American scientists, Victor Ambrose and Gary Rufkin, won the Medicine Prize for their discovery of microRNA. The prizes for chemistry and literature will be announced on Wednesday and Thursday, respectively, while the Nobel Peace Prize winner will be revealed on Friday. Hong Kong's 10 outstanding young persons this year were announced today, featuring four athletes, three doctors and an innovation and technology entrepreneur who founded a robotic company. They said they hope to inspire more young people to continue pursuing their dreams with persistence and determination. Among Hong Kong's 2024 10 outstanding young persons is Jeanette Kung. Crowned twice as queen of the Cheng Chaobun Scrambling Contest, Jeanette is also the city's top female ice climbing athlete, ranked fourth in the world. On the way of the ice climbing, is where, uh, I face many difficulties, especially I don't have any instructor. And when I'm finding the place to practice, it's always uh, very hard because it's a risky sport. But I want to say, if you want to do something, just do it. And many little steps will make your road and make your way. Also given the accolade, former Hong Kong fencer Cheng Siu Lin, who led the men's foil team across many generations and helped qualify the team for their first ever appearance at the Olympics in Tokyo. Wu Shu or martial arts athlete Juanita Mark, who clinched two gold medals at this year's World Taiji Chan Championships, and former tennis player Zhang Lin. Also named among the 10 outstanding young persons is inventor Mark Mack, also the founder of a robotic tech company and the chief designer of China's first 5G robot. He also took part in the design of the control algorithms for reflective solar panel robotic arms on NASA's space station. In addition, he brought remote control robots from China to Europe and Africa, as well as Belt and Road countries. The scientists designed robotic solutions during the COVID pandemic to help reduce infection risks at hospitals. To all of the scientists or the teenagers who would like to be a scientist in the future, I would like to uh, tell them there are hopes and we have lots of opportunity in Hong Kong that could drive us to a brighter future. This year marks the 52nd edition of the city's 10 outstanding young person selection. The annual awards hope to give recognition to people aged between 21 and 40 who have made contributions to society with outstanding achievements. Three doctors were named outstanding young persons, including Dr. Louis Mack, who pioneered the hepatitis C screening program for inmates in Hong Kong. Neurologist Gary Lau, eye doctor Wang Oi Man. Other winners are climate expert Amos Tai and Solomon Young from the insurance sector. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.